everyone. Hello everyone. It is day four and we are still looking at the triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Every day before we start, Rudy and myself as friends have a chat and uh, we speak about what, the, what God did in the last 24 hours and um, what He's busy with at our homes, what we're going through in our marriages, um, what the Lord is busy with in us personally, how He's speaking to us. This morning I saw a group of our leaders in, uh, in one of the coffee shops and uh, they got together some of the businessmen in town and uh, some of our brothers in Christ in, uh, in Patria. And we had a quick chat and, and, and I said this is something that we must remember. Even though there is a normal that is becoming the new normal, we must remember that under COVID rules, there is no such thing as normal. Uh, we must remember it. The reason I'm saying this is because our battle is not against flesh and blood. And we must recognize that there is an absolute abnormal in spiritual oppression over humanity at the moment. And so therefore you must not forget about the oppressive spirit of COVID-19. Because if you forget about it, what will happen is you're going to start to collapse inwardly because you're not going to feel normal. But you're going to think that everyone else is normal because everyone is functioning, but it's absolutely abnormal. So be very, very careful for the cunningness and the deceit of the enemy in this. Because otherwise he's going to catch you with a spirit of pity and a spirit of imploding inwardly because you're not going to recognize the oppressive spirits that is over us as humanity so god will train us through this because he makes everything work out for the good for those who love him okay mm -hmm. because god is above all mm -hmm. that's what we're going to speak about today when he's going to go to point number two however before he comes to his point number two out of the three i want to quickly read you two of my absolute favorite verses when it comes to how god helped me as a person who grew up religiously, um, knowing scripture, how he helped me understand the relationship as the Godhead, and then also my responsibility as church. And so Galatians 4 verse 6, we have read this numerous times in the studies that we did over the last few weeks, but I'm going to re-quote this and then quote Ephesians 3 verse 10, because these were the two that he gave me. The way God gave it to me was first Ephesians 3 verse 10, secondly Galatians 4, 4, 2 verse 6. However, today I'm going to read it Galatians 4 verse 6, and then we're going to go into Ephesians, and I'm going to read Ephesians 3 verse 10 to 21. So here we go. Galatians 4 verse 6, NIV. Because you are his sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into your hearts. The Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. Okay, so that is extremely important that we recognize. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit that was sent, was sent from Father. It is the Spirit of His Son. To come and live in our hearts. Why? Because, because you are His sons. Because we've been adopted into His, into his home. That's Galatians 4. Verse 4 and 5, he came under the law to be born under the law so that those under the law would be purchased. So now we are sons of God. That's the, the, the context. Now we go into Ephesians 3 and I'm going to read from verse 10 all the way to verse 21 because I want to include the prayer that Paul prayed over us as church. But it starts off with a massive statement. Verse 10 says, his intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to His eternal purpose that, has, that He accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Him and through our faith in Him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Out of Abba, Father. It says, 
I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all of the Lord's um, holy people that to grasp how wide and how long, how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask, imagine according to his power that is out at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Mm. This is God's plan. He is busy with His plan. We form part of His plan. We must therefore understand our dependence, our role, not our responsibilities, our roles, because our roles will be lived out as obedience. It is not dependent on us. It is dependent on our obedience. It is our willingness to lay down our wills. Now we go back to what we studied, laying down our wills, to submit our wills to His will because we understand that He is busy with a bigger plan from generation to generation, forever and ever. Yes and amen. <laughs> <laughs> so guys... Um... Today I'm going to focus on point two. Remember, we are speaking about the triune God. And this is so incredible when you um, read these type of scriptures and you see how the different persons of the Godhead is active and their roles that is part of our redemption and the overall story that God is telling. And it is His plan, as Peter just said. And, and, it's, and in that we have confidence. So we need to understand our triune God. So just to recap, um, the Bible teaches that God is three persons. Um, point two is each person is fully God. And then point three is there is only one God. Amen. All right. So I'm going to focus on looking at various scriptures speaking on each person in the God is fully God. That is God, the Holy Spirit is fully God. God the Father is fully God. God the Son is fully God. So that is the statement that I'm making today. So in terms of God the Father, in the Old and New Testament, it's actually very clear that God is the sovereign God. He's the, the one that created everything that was always. So I'm not going to focus too much on that. The, the word is, is very clear on, on God the Father that is the sovereign God. Now I'm going to focus on um, God the Son being fully God. And I'm going to John 1 again. And I want to just teach on John 1 a bit from one, verse 1 to 4. And I'm going to read it to you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And that is referring to Jesus Christ. Now, the phrase that confirms that Jesus is fully God is that phrase of um, God was with God and was God. Amen. All right. Now, this translation um, is sometimes challenged, uh, especially by the Jehovah Witnesses saying that Jesus Christ wasn't really fully God, all right? And that is where the doctrine is built on and that why they have to do all of these things because the message of grace they do not believe in because they do not see Jesus as fully God. Now you understand why it's so important. So they take that translation where it says, and um, he was God, they translate it and say, because there is no definite article, um, before it, um, the ho in the Greek um, that refers to the, um, and the word in Greek for God is theos. So they say it must say the God um, so that it can be translated as God. 
So they say because the is not there, who is not there, it should be translated as a God. But that is incorrect because if they continue with that same reasoning in the same chapter, if you look at verse 6, verse 12 and verse 18, if they use the same rules, all of those um, instances where it is translated as God, they should actually translate it as a God. And they actually did not do that. They actually translated it as God. So they actually contradict themselves in the same chapter in how they translate those verses. So in verse 6 it says, there was a man sent from God. So if they use the same rule, it should have said a God. All right, so that's the point I want to make. So this translation is ac accurate if we translate it as was God. All right, Jesus is truly God. I want to just um, link other scriptures as well. John 20, 27 to 28, where Thomas actually cried out when he believed truly. He said, my Lord and my God. All right, um, confirming that Jesus is truly God. In Hebrews 1.10, it speaks of, And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Again, confirming what John 1 is speaking about. And then Paul says in Colossians, he says in Colossians 2, 9 and 10, he says, For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, mm. confirming the fullness of God. And you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. Again, confirming that Jesus Christ has all authority by God's will. Mm. It's incredible. All right. So we are saying Jesus Christ is fully God. Looking at the, the Holy Spirit, let's look at um, the Holy Spirit being fully God. Now, this is also a scripture that we read last week. So if we understand that God the Father is fully God, if we fully understand that Jesus Christ is fully God, and we now read Matthew 28, 19, we will see and understand that the Holy Spirit is also fully God in equal measure. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, being part of the Godhead. In Acts 5, 3 to 4, where Peter actually speaks to Ananias because they were not faithful. He says, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did not remain your own. And after it was sold, was, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have uh, contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. So he's, he's confirming. You've lied to the Holy Spirit. And then he says, you've lied to God. Confirming um, his view on, on the Trinity. And then last verse that I want to share is 1 Corinthians three sixteen to 17. It says, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. So understanding that the Holy Spirit that lives in us is God with us. It's confirmed in, in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17. So if we look at these two statements, God is three persons and each person is fully God. And we stop there and we say, okay, that is the revelation of God. We might say that we are serving three gods. We um, have a polyhist, uh, a triune uh, uh, thinking of thinking that we are serving three gods. And that is not accurate because the Bible continues and then says, but there is only one God. And that is what we're going to look at tomorrow. All right. Amen. So the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are truly, fully God. Amen. You might, as a Christian, um, because some of us grew up in Christian homes and we truly and fully believe this because we were taught this since we can remember. You might look at this and go, I don't understand why we are actually trying to prove that God is God. And we go, we're not proving anything. What we are saying is, you must understand that there are people out there that through their worldviews are twisting scripture yes. to contradict 
the belief of Christianity. And if we want to do true Christian apologetics and evangelism, God has said, be ready with an answer. Yes. So that is the reason we are equipping and training church in accordance to Ephesians 4.11. These are the gifts that I've given the church, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher, to equip the saints to go do the good work. May you go into a deep study. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate teacher. Amen. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your heart. Seek Him, and you will find Him. Amen. Let's go into this. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.